Nancy says, what happens to the earth after Jesus returns? I've heard something about a new heaven and earth. What can you tell me about that? Well, I, I think God said, you know, he's going to make all things new. And he said the earth is going to dissolve with fervent heat. Uh, and there'll be a new heaven, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. God's going to create everything new. And the heavens, the, the earth is going to be new. But we also see a, a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven uh, onto the earth, a new Jerusalem. And uh, so we got a little bit of a mixed message, but just please know there's going to be a fabulous new creation. And there's a lot in there about melting with fervent heat. And if the sun becomes a supernova and all of a sudden explodes, this earth is going to be bye-bye bye-bye yeah. bye-bye and if that happens uh the scripture will be fulfilled very literally okay so who will be the people that will inhabit the new earth if, if everything gets well, blown up th th there'll be those of us who serve the lord and uh we, we'll we'll be spiritual beings we'll live in, in a new new heaven a new earth uh, and you know jesus said to the thief on the cross this day you'll be with me in paradise so we may have some questions about soul sleep and what about intermediate? There's nothing in the Bible about purgatory. Oh, all right. Okay, that's enough. Jesus said, you know, this day you'll be with me in paradise. I love that This scripture. day. Okay. That's so comforting. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over this. Um, the Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right. So it, to me, this is interesting. Uh, somebody uh, has a question for Pat Robertson. And... They said, well, I heard something, you know, a friend of mine knows this person, and they got a cousin who's related to some guy in Alabama, and uh, they say something about a new earth, or a new heaven, right? I heard, I've heard something, I've heard something about a new heaven and earth. You know, to me, that's an incredible story statement to make it really is I mean how about this how about reading your Bible and believing that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God and that Bible the Word of God is gonna give you more truth more wisdom, more understanding than any man on earth could do. I don't know why that's so hard for people. It's like people don't want to trust God at all. So don't even touch that Bible. Just listen to Reverend Smitty or whoever. That's the impression that I get from the that kind of question. I've heard something about a new heaven and an earth. It's really, it's an incredible statement to make. Let me just kind of show you here in Isaiah 65 for behold I create new heavens and a new earth. Wow! Isaiah 66 for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make and then 2nd Peter 3 nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I heard something about a new heaven and earth. I mean, boy, it's that's incredible, man. That's as if I've never even read the Bible. I don't care to read it. Just tell me. Just tell me. I'm too busy watching Netflix movies. Just tell me. What can you tell me about this? 
That's incredible. Okay, then let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting too ornery, ain't I? Getting too nitpicky. And uh, so we got a little bit of a mixed message, but... Got a little bit of a mixed message? Why? Why would you make that claim? What's what's the mixed message here? Let's listen to this again. God's going to create everything new. And the heavens, the, the earth is going to be new. But we also see the, a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Uh, onto the earth, a new Jerusalem, and uh, so we got a little bit of a mix. What? What is so confusing? Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, destroys all evil, all wickedness forever, and then a new. There's a new heaven and a new earth. I think um, 2 Peter 3 explains it pretty good. So in 2 Peter 3 talks about the day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night and that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved right looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat right so there's gonna be a new heavens and a new earth at that point in in Revelation 21 it talks about the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now imagine this. God creates a new heaven and a new earth and there's no city. Nothing being prepared for us. We got a lot of emptiness then, don't we? I mean, <laughs> it would be perplexing if the holy city of God did not come down from God out of heaven and I don't know what could be the what in the world is going on in your brain to think that there's a mixed message here unless of course you're imagining UFOs and evolution and super monkeys and all this sort of stuff I don't know you could be confused and could be mixed messages in your own brain but it's not mixed message in the Bible there's nothing, nothing that, uh, they, there shouldn't be any confusion, really. There shouldn't be. I know there is, but there shouldn't be. Now think about what it says here in, in Galatians uh, chapter 4. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. Right? Jerusalem, which is above right our holy city of God is not on earth it is above right that's important to understand right all right so that's that's all I wanted to share I think was there anything else goofy that this guy says you know I always like Pat Robertson nice guy but yeah I don't know how you get confused about this partner I don't know how anybody can be confused about this will be those of us who serve the Lord and now what's uh, the scripture will be fulfilled very literally okay so who will be the people that will inhabit the new earth if, if everything gets well, blown up who will be the people that will inhabit the new earth it'll be all of us that are born of God and resurrected at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ now listen to this blown up. there'll be those of us who serve the Lord and uh, 
we, we, we'll be spiritual beings. We live in. The yeah, okay, I'm okay with saying we're spiritual beings, but there, you got to understand. You got to understand. We're not just spiritual beings. We're not just spiritual beings. We're not invisible, imaginary ghosts floating around in the air. <clears throat> Excuse me, and all that goofy stuff. So let's go. And notice after Jesus is resurrected. So Jesus has been resurrected from the dead. And know also that we are going to be resurrected from the dead because he is the resurrection and we follow him. He is our leader. He is our master. He is our sh uh, shepherd. And we follow him where he goes. So he's leading the way for us and he has been resurrected. And so also are we going to be resurrected. We're going to go in that same pathway that he has made for us all right and Luke um, oh my goodness Luke 24 in verse 39 Jesus says behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Right? So we're going to have bodies. We're going to be in physical bodies. Right? So we're not just. What was that? So we're not just uh, spirit beings. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Do you? So we are in our, we are in, not in the physical body that we're in, but a new body. See, Jesus has destroyed this temple that we're in now, and he has made a new temple. And that new temple is where we are going to enter when he returns for us. Right? And he even plainly says that in three days he will rebuild the temple. And he was speaking of his, of his body. But it's the same body that we were in, or that we are in, excuse me, that he was in, that we are in now. Right? He was in this body that we're in right now. And he destroyed it. He didn't, you know, it wasn't men came, he allowed men to come and destroy his body. He gave up his body. He laid down his body for us, right? So he destroyed this body that we're in. And in three days, he built it back up into a new temple, a new body. And that's the body that we are going to be in when he returns in the clouds of heaven. Make no mistake about it. We're not just, you know, cartoon ghosts floating around in invisible air. It's, this is very, very, very real. Okay. All right, so I, I appreciate, you know, Pat Robertson talking about it and trying to explain. I think this is really something that people ought to talk more about. What will it be like after Jesus returns? He doesn't really go into it very much. A minute and 48 seconds. Um, be, it'd be nice if he had more material than that, but you know. 
it's a tough question right all right so anyways I just want to talk about that I think to me it's fascinating it is it's interesting to me I might be the only one interested into this idea of what happens after Jesus returns but it, to me it's interesting it is because that's, that's what I'm putting all my hope and my faith into you know, yeah I want I want to see this world destroyed sure but I I want I want to know about this world that is to come when we are transformed into our glorified bodies a body that will never die when we take off this mortal and put on immortality right when we take off this corruptible and put on incorruption and we are on a new earth with new heavens and that to me that's interesting you know to me that's fascinating and interesting and anyway so I'm just babbling okay all right so I I just uh, I think that's pretty cool now there's a couple things I wanted to go over I want to go over these comments here I really appreciate these comments and the why is that so has some great some great stuff here but if you don't mind I'd like to kind of get just a little bit goofy I got a little bit curious um, listening to this fella uh, he's an interesting speaker he's always got interesting thoughts and he's he's talking but I don't know where it's at in the video here but he's talking about how uh, all these doctrines that um, basically they uh, they excuse the Pope or they they excuse in a sense uh, the Roman Catholic Church how all these doctrines that are floating around in the world today that they are from the Roman Catholic Church and he names the Jesuits in particular and I can't disagree so it's very clear when studying the Bible and you were studying the Antichrist and studying the end times and all this sort of stuff it's very clear that the Pope is the Antichrist and it to me it's it's just lunacy to think that there's some legitimacy to the Pope there's none whatsoever the Bible specifically points to him as the Antichrist there's no question about it who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God he thinks I mean the the what the the title Pope means Holy Father what do you need it you need God to come down and, and point his finger at him before you figure it out well this the problem is of course that there is all these false doctrines that teach all these things but the truth and quite often um, uh, you'll have doctrines that go from one extreme to the other extreme right and th that's part of his point Troy Clemens make makes the point of uh, uh, that sort of mentality and, and so on and so forth and uh, you know it's just interesting stuff um, of course the eschatology of Luke 21 I'm not sure why it says Luke 5155 but it, it it's he was talking about the eschatology of Luke 21 that because it's it lines up exactly with Matthew 24 and Mark 13 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world right and he's he's talking about in the very beginning of this how every stone he when Jesus talks 
to when he's talking to his disciples and they're looking at let me see the temple here and the goodly stones right there it is how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts and Jesus says behold the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down this has not happened you gotta be you gotta just come out and just say Jesus Christ is a liar in order to say that that has happened because it has not happened and the whole context of this and the assumption of those that are with Jesus are hey this is when this happens this has to be the end of the world so they ask a master when shall these things be and what shall and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass there's absolutely no question no doubt what they're referring to and what everybody understands it's they're inquiring about the end of the world and we read the same thing in, in Matthew 24 as well as Mark 13 Jesus says there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and so his disciples came to him privately and said when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world they understand that when all these stones are thrown down not one stone shall be left upon another there shall not be uh, shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down they're all going to be thrown down every single one of them we read here in second peter chapter 3 how when jesus comes the elements shall melt i mean everything is going to be dissolved everything is going to be utterly destroyed there's going to be a new earth a brand new earth so there is no question about it they're they're looking at this as well this is going to happen at the end of the world and jesus is telling us man this is all going to be destroyed at the end there's a coming and end of this world and so they they ask them, and they're curious i'd be curious i'm curious even right now for the end of the world for these things to happen and they ask them. And so Jesus goes over in, in, in uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. You can read all about it, but that's an interesting uh, point that, that Troy Clemens makes here. This is obviously regarding the end of the world. And so the point that he doesn't make that I, I think he should make is that this whole idea of 70 AD has nothing at all to do with anything in the Bible. None whatsoever. Alright, and so I'll contend, I won't lay this on hand, but I'll contend that the doctrine of 70 AD comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Has no Bible significance whatsoever. No relevance at all. Alright. Now, I forget where I was going with that. Um, other than to say that um, we, you know, we see all these, uh, you know, I've heard of, uh, you know, when I remember when I was a kid, Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist, then George Bush was the Antichrist, so on and so forth. Well, Ronald Reagan, Ronald, six letters, Wilson, six letters, Reagan, six letters six 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 Ronald Reagan must be the Antichrist no that's all well and good but he's not the Antichrist right and it's interesting it just is because why would people even consider that 
when the Bible is crystal clear, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope is the Antichrist. So we get all these, I don't even know if you can call them all doctrines, but all these ideologies that there's going to come an Antichrist in the future. Well, all this ideology, all this thought comes, stems from, and is perpetrated and promoted by the Roman Catholic Church. There's no doubt in my mind. See, if they can get you to believe anything other than the straight fact that the Pope is the Antichrist, he's always been the Antichrist. And I, I just wonder how many people are actually blind to this. Because the Bible says this is exactly what would happen. That there would be a falling away. That people would be blinded. And uh, they would turn from the truth. And right here in Revelation 17, verse 8, it says the beast. Now this beast is talking of, is it's the same beast as the fourth beast of Daniel. Make no mistake about it. And Daniel's very clear that there will be four beasts until the end of the world. And he names the first three beasts. So we can figure out the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. The beginning of the New Testament. When Rome is in charge over the whole world. So the fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire. In Revelation 17, the beast talking about the Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is now we can put this all together and realize hey it's not the Roman Empire it's the Roman Catholic Church see they transitioned from a physical empire into a spiritual empire so I, you've, maybe you've heard me say this before, but I contend that the, the Roman emperors, they realized, hey, Jesus just outdid us. Because Jesus not only showed that he is God of the earth, but he is God of heaven and earth. And so they can't top that. But what they can do is try to take his place and mimic what he has done and mimic his power and mimic his people and pose themselves as though they were God and God's people and that's exactly what they've done they can't outdo it but they can pretend to have taken its place and so anyways um, it's very clear, very clear. But uh, so very, some very interesting stuff in this, the first 15 minutes of this video by Troy Clemens. Now I don't know what all this stuff is, um, but I just, I, I just think that was interesting what he talked about. Now there's one goofy thing before I get to the comments. One goofy thing I wanted to share. Um, so when he was talking about this, right? He he was talking about how there's uh, all these doctrines and, and the, they go from one to the other. And you know how uh, you've heard me talk about uh, the earth is not flat, it's bumpy. Well, uh, the mainstream view, the popular view is that the earth is a, uh, a, a ball, right? How, do, what would you, how would you call that? Convex? you'd say the earth is convex and then um, on the other side of course you're gonna have somebody teaching the idea that the earth is concave and I remember when I first um, I spent hours every day studying this particular subject and um, afterwards I I started looking at opposing views and different views uh, out of curiosity what are they teaching and 
Uh, one of the more popular, I mean, the flat earth stuff was nothing in 2012, 10, 10 11 years ago. It was nothing. It was There was hardly anything at all, but there were uh, quite a few videos on this idea of a concave earth. I thought that was a little bit interesting, so I checked it out. And there, notice that there's one guy. But it's just one guy, but he was making video after video, and he was fairly popular. Maybe he, maybe it was only a thousand. I was thinking he had more subscribers back then, and he may have, right? So I, I just was curious, just wanted to look and see what he's been up to, right? Because he. He threatened me. He said he was gonna he was gonna send me to the FEMA camps, and uh, I, I rather enjoyed that threat. And you know, of course, in my mind, FEMA is Walmart, so he's gonna send me to Walmart. I guess I don't know, but I notice here, looking at his videos here or at his channel, I should say, that his oldest videos are five years ago what happened to him because I know he's been around for at least 10 years yeah, at least 12 years right so if something happened to all his videos I, I don't know what I don't know what happened to him but I suspect this is what happened to him So anyways, I can't hardly hear any of that. Um, but it sounds like he said uh, he wanted to warn people about December 31st that the sun and the moon were going to stop spinning. And um, I don't personally, I don't, I can't tell you. I don't know. I'm not smart enough, I guess, to say. Boy, somebody correct me on this. I, I don't know that the sun and the earth, the uh, sun and the moon, is that what he said? The sun and the moon, or did it, did I mishear him? The sun and the moon are going to stop spinning. Sun and the moon are going to... I don't know that they're spinning. So I don't know what in the world... Uh, he's talking about. Alright. So I don't know when... Uh, this... The original video of this took place. You disgusting people. I'm going to fucking kill you all when I'm in church. So I think that's, you kind of get an idea um, that possibly this guy who calls himself Lord Stephen Christ, possibly, perhaps, he is not the Lord and he is not the Christ. Ah, I don't think he is. I want you to look at me. Look at me. Look. No, really look at me. No. You're not looking at me. Yeah, you're not looking at me. Look at me. Look at me. For two minutes he does that.
for two minutes. He sits there in front of the camera and says, look at me. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Goodness sakes. I, I don't know what's... I don't know what's going on with this guy. But, you know, he had people's attention for a while there before the flat earth really boomed. And well, now he's in a psych ward, is that right? Or is he out now? It's hard telling. He might, he might be right back. You disgusting people. I'm going to fucking kill you all. But... Yeah, he might be... That might be the best place for him. Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. Probably most of you have no idea. Uh, the history of, uh, you know, everything. And, you know, we had communications ten years ago. Like I said, he... Uh, well, I might have been a little bit, you know, brash or whatever with... Um, with what he was teaching. I might have said something snarky in one of his comments and he he then said he was gonna send me to the FEMA camps I appreciated that I got a good chuckle out of that of course uh, I wasn't the only one he was gonna he pretended to have power and he still does I guess or did whatever he has power to send people to FEMA camps if they disagree with his concave man theory Anyways, it's just nonsense. I'm just wasting your time talking about that nonsense. All right, so I want to go over the comments here. All right, the why is that? So he says, you believe the same lies that the false Roman church teaches, all 40,000 plus denominations. I don't know how, how, did you use a calculator to count those up? I, that's pretty good. Of false Roman Christianity teach the same lies as their mother. All Protestants are her protesting daughters that came out of the Reformation. All right, so let me just real quickly go over this. So I, I'm, uh, in a sense, I'm with you in the sen in the sense that I don't like labels at all. But it is absolutely imperative and important that you understand the difference between a Roman Catholic and a Christian, a true Christian. It's impossible to tell nowadays because people call Roman Catholics Christians, and they're not. It's like calling Mormons Christian; they're not. But you know, if you you read your Bible, you would see that, you know, like in Matthew twenty-four, that you know Jesus says, "Many will come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many." Right, so this is what's supposed to happen. Right? They're supposed to be deceivers, liars in the end time, more so than ever before, and that's what, exactly what's going on. Okay. All right, so all All right, so then also the other point I want to make is the Protestant movement began because they were protesting the idea of a pope. The pope is not biblical at all. Not what, not it, and there's nothing at all that remotely suggests the idea that there should be a pope. And, and it very straight way speaks out against the idea of a pope. And then the the verse, the one verse in the entire Bible that they used that they think is going to trick people into believing that the Pope is justified is in, <clears throat> excuse me, in, is in Matthew 6, 16, right? When his disciples come to him, or I'm sorry, when Jesus says to his disciples, whom do men say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, Elias, Elias, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he got it right. 
he got it exactly right. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the church is built on that fact. The church is built on that rock. The fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that's the rock the church is built on. And, of course, the Catholics, they purposely try to get people to rethink this right Mani they manipulate people's thoughts into thinking this somehow is referring to Peter as the rock and not Jesus Christ in the fact that he is the son of the living God but rather Peter all right and honest to God I don't know how anybody can, can get that wrong but over a billion people do today they don't understand it and then of course if you never read the Bible you wouldn't even know this if Peter was the rock that your church is built on and then what do we got here five verses later what is your church built on that's right Satan that's a hell of a church you got there, partner. All right, so I get it. You're against the Roman Catholic Church, so am I. But I'm not. If I'm teaching it, if I'm teaching something wrong, period. I want to know. All right. If I got anything at all wrong, I want to know, regardless of what others might be teaching. You okay? All people, all humanity will be saved. Uh, not just you self-righteous hypocrites calling yourself Chris, Christian. Okay. So this is pure insanity. All right. If all were saved, then there is no justice. All right. And so this idea that everybody's saved, it's stupid. It's not biblical and it nullifies any hope for justice All right. God does not torture weak and deceived human beings in some kind of eternal hellfire alright so what is the word that I'm looking for or the phrase uh, thou fool, thou should be in danger of hellfire. Uh, actually, thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. It is better that you pluck out one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into hellfire. It's better to have one hand or you know, enter into life maimed and to have two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Uh, and your foot, same thing. Better to have one foot than to have two feet and thrown into hell where the fire's never quenched. Uh, we get, um, that as well. Death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. Hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Right. So God does not torture weak and deceived human beings in some kind of eternal. So I'm not sure what you're what you're talking about here. If you want to look at it as that, you know, they're not being tortured. I'm with you. All right. It the fact that they are going to die and that they die a second death. That alone is eternal torture. The fact that they're going to be dead forever is eternal torture 
All right, I, you know, I don't want to get into this the semantics here I don't care about that stuff if you want to word it differently that's okay I don't care I don't care about that stuff people do not go anywhere when they die the spirit that they really are is reincarnated into another soul alright so um, If that were so, why would the world come to an end? I mean, that's... And so, I'm not me. I'm actually somebody that died before I was born. Alright, so think about this. When Jesus died... He wasn't reincarnated. I mean, he didn't appear to his disciples after he resurrected as a little baby. Is that what you're saying? Is reincarnated into another soul, another body of flesh? Now, surely you're not saying that Jesus took over an adult. He was re reincarnated into an adult? How? That doesn't make any sense. Does it? Did it? Because if there was an adult, then there, that, would ha that would be their own soul. That, that adult would be their own person. They'd have their own soul. So Jesus couldn't reincarnate into that body. That, that body's already taken. He can only be reincarnated into a baby. I mean, what in the world? Man, I thought this guy was goofy. I think we got somebody goofier. Or maybe they're the one and the same person. I don't know. Hey, this stuff is nonsense, man. It does it. It voids all logic and common sense, and void completely void of the scripture. But I appreciate, I appreciate it. Maybe this will help somebody. Is it possible I could help you to understand this is nonsense? How do I even begin to? Do you believe Jesus was reincarnated? Jesus was a man with a sinful nature like all men are. Not some superman from heaven. I agree with that. Absolutely, I agree with that. Not, not this here, but I agree that Jesus it was, or is, was God manifest in the flesh. He came into our own flesh and he tore down this body and he rebuilt it back up and ascended to heaven and promised to return for us and deliver us into this new temple that he has built for us So I don't know, I don't know what in the world is your point here, man. You seem to be goofy. You seem to be goofy. The true gospel is the soon coming kingdom government of God. On this earth. Not some story about Jesus. Alright. So, I dare you to prove me wrong on any of these truths using scripture... God's word. You can try, but God's word, who you do not know, will make you look like the fool that you really are. So be warned. All right. So I I have to use scripture to uh, what? What what I got to prove wrong here? That 
I can't use scripture to disprove reincarnation because reincarnation is not in the Bible uh, specifically and it's not supported by the Bible at all uh, Wedden 105.1919 says Hebrews 4 verse 15 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin right so I think that um, that I think we were all agreeing on that right, he was tempted by it all right, so he's so he wants to to look at your the carnal mind as the devil and um, I'm mean, just playing goofy. Right. Hebrews 5 or 7 Who, when he was in the flesh, offered up prayers and supplication with strong tears and crying unto him, who was able to save him from death. Right. I gotta, I gotta double check this. I gotta double check this because I do not trust. Where in the world? What was it? I forget where it was. What was he talking about? Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he, he yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I don't know what the point is here, partner, five minutes ago. I don't know what the point was here. You left something out, it looks like. Um, Alright, so what? what is it you want me to uh, uh, use what prove me wrong? Right, they, 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 the, <laughs> you want me to prove... Boy, that's a tough one. Prove that reincarnation... does not exist that's kind of tough isn't it I mean it's so goofy how do you disprove something as goofy as that well if we go to Revelation I'm sorry excuse me Daniel 12 chapter chapter 12 verse 2 many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, now, uh, this suggests obviously that when we die, we go to the dust of the earth, just like I pointed out the other day when Daniel, or um, when David was grieving for his son because his son was sick and dying. And then when he died, he stopped uh, fasting. He stopped grieving. He got up and ate. And they uh, they asked they asked him about this, and, and he said, um, "You know, now that he's dead, um, wherefore should I fast? You know, and grieve?" He said, "I will go to him, but he shall not return to me." Right. So. His son went to the grave. Dave also acknowledged that he will go to the grave, which is the dust of the earth. Right? Now there's a verse here that, or a phrase, or 
something in this book here and I don't remember exactly what the phrase was I don't remember so I'm, I'm gonna waste a little bit of your time trying to jog my memory a little bit <clears throat> talking about I think that's it right there. All right, so let's let me look at this one real quickly. Uh, if I'm just going to read for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beast, even one thing befalleth them. As the one dies, so dies the other. Yeah, they have all one breath, so that a man has not preeminent, preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity. All go unto one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Who knows? Where, wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works for that he I'm sorry for that is his portion for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him Let's go to this other one here. Ecclesiastes 12. I just want to read this. I apologize if I'm wasting your time. I'm just looking. Looking, 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 looking here. And then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now, I have to start at the top to get the context all right remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after rain in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders seize because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of the music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or even the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. All is vanity. All right, so um, that's interesting. That's great stuff. But I, I think I would, I'd prefer to go to Ecclesiastes three, right, where. Where are we at here? Did I? No, oh, right there. Yeah, so let's go to Ecclesiastes 3 and see if this fits the idea of reincarnation. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up. That which is planted. Excuse me. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, 
a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, I'm sorry, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, rip, tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to, I'm sorry, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit has he that works in that wherein he labors? I have seen travail, which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in his heart, in their heart, excuse me, so that man can find out, so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it. That men should fear before him. That which has been is now. And that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness. That iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there is. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in mine heart concerning the state of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalls the sons of men befalls beasts. Even one thing befalls them as the one dies so dies the other yeah they have all one breath so that a man has no preeminence above a beast for all is vanity all go unto one place all are of the dust and all turn to dust again who knows the spirit of man that goes upward and the spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Now, to me this very clear I mean everything that we see in life indicates that we are of our own I am just me alright when I was born I was born when I die I die okay I'm not I'm not gonna be reincarnated into a woman I'm not gonna be reincarnated into a trans gender transvite whatever those goofy people are I, I'm me I'm just me and when I die I die and what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are all awakened right and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some 
to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, it is appointed unto man how many times to die? Oh, I gave away the answer, didn't I? What I do? Type it twice? What's the matter? Oh, well, no, maybe it is twice. Do put man instead of men. All right. So Hebrews nine verse twenty seven. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. All right. So according to the why is that so? Uh, Hebrews nine verse twenty seven is a lie. The Bible lies. There's no other way that you can get around this. There's no uh, no possible way. See, if you're re reincarnated into another body of flesh after you die, then you will die again. But Hebrews Uh-oh. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says it is up appointed unto men once to die I just don't see any way to get around that partner I mean you know one thing that I, I think that you're not addressing here or maybe I should read this for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed as and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation Now, I don't want to go through this hell again. You think about how wicked this world is and all the pain and suffering that we've endured in our life. And here comes Mr. The Why Is That So? Claiming that we're all going to be reincarnated and we're going to have to endure this hell again. I'm not buying it, partner. I think you're full of shh. Uh, it. I think you're full of it. I really do. I'm not I can't go along with this reincarnation bit, man. We're going to have to endure what what are you saying? That every we're, we're going to have to continuously endure pain and suffering forever and ever. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now maybe it's me that should be warning you. You think about that. So, uh, I'm just curious here. Um, Jesus uh, was a man. That's right. Jesus is God Almighty. Jesus is God Almighty. We read this all throughout the scripture. What's interesting here in Revelation chapter 1, um, not only is he the first begotten of the dead, and not only is he coming in the clouds of heaven, he is the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the ending he is 
He is which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He's Almighty God. He is the Creator. He has made everything. Everything was made by Him and for Him. All right. So He's not just a man, but He was manifest into our flesh, and He because He is our Shepherd, He is our leader. He has led the way for us. He has suffered because he knows that we suffer. He has overcome. And now we overcome just as he has done when we are born of God or when we believe in him. Right? When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have overcome the world. Alright, so I appreciate that. Right there. Alright, so I, I would say, hey man, your reincarnation stuff, <laughs> big fart sound. And nonsense, man. Lord Serpent, Devils, Dragon, Satan. Uh, med metaphors. I don't know what metaphors is. I don't know what a metaphor is. Yeah, spiritual language and metaphor. I don't think it's the same thing. Uh, the serpent is a literal snake. The dragon is a literal creature. Now, is not a literal. Yeah, so Satan and the devil is not a literal being of any kind. All right, the serpent and the dragon. These are literal creatures. But. <laughs> There's the physical creature, and then there's the spiritual reference and when it's regarding the spirit of the devil and the spirit of Satan. These are all spirits that are absent of God, and Satan means adversary. Good job. Uh, to, wait, well, God uses and God causes adversity. To help us, okay. He causes all the pain and suffering in this world. God causes the evil in this world. Alright, so I'm with you. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm kind of with you. What you're kind of saying is that God has set the stage and all the stuff that happens. Um, ultimately goes back to God uh, because he allowed it right is am I getting that right here's just one verse of scripture that tells us this but there are many more I'm quoting God's word here thank you for that the Lord has made all things for himself yes even the wicked for the day of evil all right, so let's go to I just gotta confirm this because I'm telling you People have quoted goofy stuff and tried to get away with stuff. I gotta confirm it. The Lord has made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Yeah. Yeah, good job. So, your false assumption lie that God will kill all the evil people because they are evil is wrong uh, you know this pro you know I appreciate that but this is not saying God is not going to kill evil or wicked yeah, how in the world are you reading that and getting this idea that God is not going to kill the, the evil people God is going to kill all the evil people. That's clear all throughout the scripture. God caused them to be evil in the first place. That is why they are here. To help those who are righteous to become better people. 
And when the time comes, God will save all the evil people too. Uh, no, that's not what the Bible says. God will save all people. So you don't even need to believe in Jesus Christ. God's going to save you. That's ridiculous and stupid and evil and wicked. I'm trying to be a basic, as basic and elementary as I can because it's obvious that you are mentally impaired. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm mentally impaired. Uh, you're saying everybody's going to be saved. No justice. No justice at all. All right, so. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I don't even know where to begin, honestly. I mean, if you know about the wheat and the tares, the harvest is the end of the world, right? And uh, you, you, you just don't get it. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And the tares are the children of the wicked one. And the children of the wicked one are going to be burned. You think about, well, the evil ones, the, the wicked ones, however you want to look at it. We're all, we're all wicked. We're all evil. There's none righteous, no, not one. We're all evil. And it's God's fault. Yeah, sure, okay. But, <clears throat> to be fair, God has given us every opportunity to do it ourselves. We can't. We can't do it without God. That's clear. Right? So, God has done it all now you think about we're all wicked evil people and Jesus has come to give his life as a sacrifice to cover our iniquities to cover our evil to cover our wickedness the blood of Jesus covers all of it so now, those of us that believe in Him and that are born of God, God looks at us as though we don't have any sin, we don't have any evil, we don't have any wickedness at all. Because we are born of the Spirit of God. Alright, so... <laughs> We're all evil people. We all have an evil heart. But we're not all born of the Spirit of God. The only way that we can be not evil is if we have the Spirit of God in us. If we are born of God, that's the only way. And the only way is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, so I appreciate that. Uh, the why is that so? Uh, you, this reincarnation nonsense is stupid. If I could be plain, speak plainly, it's dumb. Hey, try to use some of your brain and read the Bible, really. Just try to think a little bit. User OX8EM2FF2T says, Bible, Song of Solomon, for Isaiah, for army, 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 until military for men slash women needed, Jesus dead, comma, him. Alright, thank you for that comment. Appreciate that. Gabriel SYT says, Walter V. 
Am I saying his last name right? Walter Veth or Walter Veth sees the Vatican. I know who that is, by the way. Um, he's got a lot of interesting stuff. He he's an older gentleman and uh, interesting old feller. Sees the Vatican and Catholic Church same as you. I like hearing you and Walter both. So in very good company. I appreciate that. Um, that's a very nice compliment right there. And study your Bible and then make a vid. Okay, thanks. Oh, I read that yesterday. Yeah, so that's what I try to do. I appreciate that Overwatch 7774. That's that's great advice, man. You know, if I could, I'd I'd return that advice. I I, I return that advice to you, my my friend. Study your Bible and make of it. Okay, appreciate that. All right, so that's it. Appreciate these comments here again. Once again, you can't say dude. If you say dude, then your comment will not be displayed. Right. That's a rule, fellow. That's a rule. And I got rules in. I do not appreciate the use of that word. Okay. Alright, so I guess that's it, fellas. I don't know what else to say. Oh, look, can we finish it on something? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know what we can finish it on. we got to end it on something, don't we? we got to end it on something. All right. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, man. We're putting our hope into eternal life, right? We're putting our hope into everlasting life on a new earth with new heavens into a body that will never die, right? That's, that's going to happen, guaranteed. This nonsense of reincarnation, man, I feel like... I don't know if I can, if I need to talk any more about it. I feel like I'm wasting time, man. Really. There's a whole lot of nonsense out there. And if we spend all of our time dealing with the nonsense, we're going to lose track of the things that make sense. Right? Now think about this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, at the end of the world, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. This is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, signifying it's the end of this world. Right? And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, if Bozo the Clowns reincarnation theory is correct there wouldn't be any dead in Christ they would all be reincarnated into living bodies when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven make no mistake about it All right, this reincarnation stuff that's for the circus All right, it's not for those of us that are built on the foundation and spirit of truth. 